Here we are with uh, lesson three of uh, chapter 11.5. Uh, let's finish off a couple other examples here for you guys and uh, hopefully seal this idea. So for the first one, we saw what we had to do. Th uh, do. We had the balanced equation, and then we used the Hess's shortcut, which just looked at formation enthalpy data for reactants and products. We have then found that difference, and that would have to be the difference in energy for our particular reaction at hand. Of course, we can apply those to any other things. Here we have one where it says, predict the standard enthalpy change for the reaction in which we have four moles of ammonia being burned in the presence of seven moles of oxygen to give us nitrogen dioxide and water in its liquid form. So again, there's the information that this is a closed system. For this one then, I'm just going to rewrite this just so I can see it a little bit. Uh, well, I guess I don't need to see it any more clearly. There's my reactants. There's my products. So I'm going to have to find these enthalpies and subtract these from them. So in this case, the delta CH for this reaction is, again, the sum of all of those molar quantities for the formation of product molar enthalpies. Subtract from that sum of all of the molar quantities of the formation of reactant molar enthalpies. Okay, for this one then, let's uh, find out what we have for our products. And so we have nitrogen dioxide in which, whoops, bracket, four moles of NO2 are being formed. And if you look that up on your data table, you will find that it is uh, for, what are we looking at here? Nitrogen dioxide ends up being 33.2 kilojoules per mole. All right, so there's one quantity of product. I need another product right here. That's my liquid water. So I'll add the six mole value for the negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole that I get when I form liquid water. From that, again, I have two reactants here. I have ammonia, which I'll quickly find that one here. And it says four moles of ammonia are for are react pardon me decomposed here I'll use their formation enthalpies so that is negative 45.9 kilojoules per mole and then of course when we take a look at elements even our molecular elements those 10 things that don't like to exist as single atoms are still elemental and therefore still defined as zero and so I don't see any additional enthalpy change because of oxygen for this then, I just have to go through and add everything together. All right, so four times 33 here is just over 130 kilojoules. This uh, is, we're gonna be somewhere around 1700 kilojoules. And so we do have about a 1570 or so kilojoule, uh, uh, pardon me, kilojoules of energy released due to the formation of those products. In here, we have about another 180 that is input to decompose your uh, reactants. And so we just take the difference between those two. And so when you run it through your calculator, after you cancel out all those moles, watching your brackets and your operations, you end up here with negative 1398.4 kilojoules. Okay. And so we are keeping all of our digits here because ultimately Hess's law is just a series of addition steps. All right, we include some subtraction because of the sign flip. But when we're doing our multiplication here, we're dealing with the whole numbers from the balanced chemical equation. And so they don't live at significant digits. So what does, remember the addition and subtraction rule, we haven't seen this since molar masses too much, all right, is the lowest number of decimal points must be maintained regardless of how big or how small that uh, remaining number becomes. All right, so these ones will generally all have one decimal point. So there we go, that is our delta CH for this particular reaction. We see that the combustion is exothermic. What I have you guys do now is just pause the video and I would like you guys to complete question number three in which we're looking for the molar enthalpy of combustion of glucose. Now, we do have glucose listed here, all right, but that is its formation enthalpy as we see at the title here, all right, and this one would not look like anything in which uh, we have something that emulates 
a formation reaction for its combustion. So we will have to use Hess's shortcut. So I'd like you guys to try that. Pause the video. When you come back, I'll have the answer for you here and you can see how you did. All right, so now you've got some work for that one. Let's uh, see how it goes. So we must have this molar enthalpy of combustion of glucose. All right, so we are going to burn it. So there's your C6H12O6. You can deal with it in its solid form. This must react with oxygen if it's going to be combustion. And so I do have a couple of elements here that are going to react with oxygen. I have my carbon to produce carbon dioxide, which should be gaseous. And remember, cellular respiration that's closed. So you should have written down liquid water. Okay, and we're looking for that molar enthalpy of combustion, so we will have to do much like example one, that two-step solution. For this then, I can figure out the delta H of this particular reaction in this combustion and is equal to the sum of the formation of product molar enthalpies minus the sum of our formation of reactant molar enthalpies that we have here from our data table. And so again, when I balance this, just quickly do this. So we go to our data table, we find some of these things. Again, we've just quickly balanced this, and so there's my six carbon dioxides and my six liquid waters that I have to account for as my products. And so we'll see that there's going to be a lot of energy released with the formation of these two guys here. And so I had 6 moles of carbon dioxide times negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. That's a lot of energy. Add that to 6 moles of liquid water. And that's times negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. So there's another big chunk of energy. Subtract from that what we have for the formation of glucose, take care of its decomposition with the sign flip, and so you had one mole of your glucose, and that is times negative 1273 point, let's look that up here, 0.3 kilojoules per mole, plus zero for my elemental oxygen. All right, kind of ran myself out of space there, but I hope you can see it. And so we just have to uh, run through this. All right, so we can see here that you have about 2,400 kilojoules given off for your carbon dioxide. Again, we have about just around 1,700 given off here, so there's a big surplus of energy being released. Although a fairly significant input here, when we uh, run that through just very quickly here, When we run that through, you can find out that the difference between these two energies is a surplus of 2802.5 kilojoules because all of our mole quantities canceled when we ran that through. Okay, hope that one went well for you guys. Uh, there is another one to do here, and uh, I'll probably save that for one more video just because there's a lot of explanation that goes along with it. All right, and the only difference would be I'm not going to ask for the total, I can ask you to find out a particular formation enthalpy per mole from this statement. So again, it's just an algebra problem in which I'm solving for a different x rather than the one that I have isolated. Okay, so this is a formula. I can solve for all parts of that formula. Generally, it's not the moles because I can see it, but it'll be those formation enthalpies. And this can be a very helpful thing to do when you don't have the substance on your data table. Okay, so if you want, you can start trying that one on your own before you look at the next video. However, if you want, we can go through it step by step uh, if you want to just follow along with me. All right, good luck with it. One more video to go for this for our last example, and then 11.5 can be put to bed.